Hi all, Karthik here from Design School by WP Algorithm. In this video, I'll show you how to build powerful and beautiful WordPress tables using a powerful plugin called Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. It's an add-on for Elementor, so you need both Ultimate Add-ons and the Elementor free version itself installed. So you can get it from the link in the description, Ultimate Add-ons. Once you have Ultimate Add-ons installed, just go to Elementor interface open up any page post or a template I'll call it ultimate tables give your template any name once you're in the Elementor interface and once you have the ultimate add-ons installed just search for table and you find this one from ultimate add-ons for Elementor now there's other widget called table of contents but we're concerned with this table and the real cool thing about ultimate add-ons table widget is that it's all visual so what you see is what you get so each and every cell can be styled using the visual interface without writing a single piece of code and there are other ton of powerful features too I'll explain that I'll click on the section let's add a padding of maybe 50 pixels around so that it's overall a bit neat now I'll click on the widget itself by clicking on the button I'll also show you how to embed this widget in the Gutenberg interface so that you can get best of both worlds so you can either Put this widget in the Elementor interface or in the Gutenberg interface. Once you drag the widget, you have these two tabs, which is essentially table header and table content. Table header is the one that has the headings or the start of the table. So by default, it will create rows and cells. That's how it works. So row is essentially a horizontal row and cells are individual items in which you actually put out data. And that's same for the header and the content as well. So even uh, your content is made up of row and in turn row is made up of these cells. It's quite easy to create all of them from the scratch. So I'll delete all of that. And all we have right now is a row. I'll also delete the cells in the header so that we can create from the scratch. So once you click on this header, we're actually dealing with the header now and the source we picked manual I'll also show you how it works with CSV so you can import your excel sheet data into this add-on that's a really powerful feature so first pick start new row because we don't have a row itself for our heading or the header table header I'll duplicate it twice and I'll change this from start new row to add new cell so that will turn this element into cell I'll call it heading 1 and I'll actually duplicate this twice and change the content I'll call this heading 2 the content can be simple heading or you can link that to dynamic tags from Elementor Pro so you can link it to ACF fields to the dynamic data which is really awesome right you can link it to the post data as well so you can link it to post title so if I link it to post title you can see the post title I'll change this to heading 3 now instead of having plain content or linking it to dynamic tags you can also have an image or icon let's use an icon so I'll just click insert so it also adds icon to our content you can also add an image instead of an icon and you can pick the image itself so if you add something like that see so right next to your heading you can also add your icon if you wish to or you can add an image and for each cell under the advanced tab you can set column span and row span which I'll get to in a bit you can set the width of each cell so you can make it 50 pixels or in percentage percentage will take up the space of the column so if I say 10% it will be 10% of the column width but you just leave it as is because by default it will make it responsive and good looking on all devices so just leave it as is but if you want you can set absolute width as well even that's possible you can set the text color so if I change it to something the heading changes to that you can also set individual background color how cool is that so for each cell you can have a different background color and different text color of course for the whole row you can have a background color and text color which is how usual it is 
But if you want to override it at individual cell level, you can go to advanced tab and quite comfortably do that. You can style the row in the style tab, which we'll get to in a bit. So we are done with the header or the heading tab. Now let's go to the content. We just have a row, but we don't have content. So I'll add an item. By default, when I click on add item, it adds a cell. It knows that I need to add a cell. Now I can simply call it cell one. And what's really cool is that I can actually link it by using the elementary default options. So, so if I search for a page, maybe just like that, I can link the cell to anything on my site. You can paste the URL from any other site as well. And even it has dynamic options per cell. This is really amazing. And of course you can add custom attributes. I've explained this already. Let's add a couple of other cells. We'll remove the link for now, just to keep it simple. I'll call it cell two. I'll also remove the link from here. You just need to delete the link and it becomes a normal cell. I'll call it cell three. I'll also remove the link from here. So that's really neat. We just created one row and within each row there are cells so cell 1 cell 2 cell 3 that's really neat similarly you can add another row if i change this from cell to row it will create a row but since there's no other cell no data is being displayed if i click on item let's call it cell 4 let's duplicate it twice cell 5 and six right you can put any text here i'm just putting cell data here by default it's a striped table so alternate rows have different backgrounds and you can also adjust that so once you create the table right what you see is what you get let's also set a background for our section that has this table i'll set a white background so it's quite visible right I'll click on the widget again. Now we have understood how the table header, which is essentially has the heading and the table cells work. Now let's go to advanced settings. You can make this a sortable table. So if you toggle this on, when you click on the each of the heading, it will be sorted with the data within. So it can be alphabetical and it can be number. So if I change it to 100 and if I change it, to thousand and if I try sorting you know how it works right so either from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing and that's clear from the arrow here so it's really smart it sorts all kinds of data it can be text it can be number it can be anything if it's text it sorts in the alphabetical order if it's number well with the value right so that's really neat you can also add a search option so let's say if I search for let's say 100 that will be automatically filtered but that works really well on front end I'll show you that in a bit. You can also show entries drop down so you can pick how many table entries should be shown. Let's duplicate our content. And if we add content within, you can clearly sort it out and filter and show how many entries or the rows you want per table. Even that's really helpful. Helpful information will essentially take you to the documentation, right? It's quite simple to understand. I'll just remove this extra rows for now. And thus, right. I think that looks better anyway so once that's how you create a table manually right so if you are trying to enter data manually that's how you create a table I'll duplicate this widget once again and I'll show you how easy it is to import your Excel data in CSV format now CSV is comma separated value it's an open source format so you can save your files in CSV format even your excel sheet can be exported as a csv file and once you have the csv file 
If you change the source from manual to CSV, you can simply upload that file. I'll click on upload files, I'll click on select files and I have a CSV, sample CSV here. Let's and if I try to preview that, that's the data it has, right? So if I click on open and if I click on insert, it just reads the data and displays that in the table exactly the way we want, right? You don't have to do manual entry of each and every cell of your table, right? It's smart enough to read the table and display it in the visual format. That's really awesome. I don't think any other WordPress plugin offers this functionality. It's really smart. It works with Elementor interface. So that's how the CSV format or the CSV file scan works, right? Just upload a CSV file, even save your Excel sheet as a CSV file and upload it and the plugin will do the rest. You don't have to do anything. Now let's get back to styling. I'll just click on this. I'll click on style. You can set a color for your entire row or the text of your row. So this is for the header. So the one that has heading. Of course, you can override this at individual level. You can set a background for your entire heading row. I'll go with these options for now. You can set the padding for the heading row. You can apply border and you can choose the width of your border. You can change it from solid to dashed or dotted. So it looks something like that. If you don't want that dotted border, you can simply remove that. It's really neat. And you can also change the hover state of your table, right? So if I change it to something like that, that way it's really interactive. Now the same thing can be done with the table body. You can also pick the text alignment of the body, which is really neat. You can align it onto the center. Even the vertical alignment can be adjusted. If you add a little bit of padding and stuff. And if you want striped effect, so even and odd rows will have different kinds of backgrounds. You can see that here. So odd rows, you can set a background color for odd rows. And a background color for even rows as well. So something like that. So for alternating items you can have different rows colors you can set the color of the border as well and you can also tweak the image position for the icon or the image added per cell you can change the label color for this so if i change it to this you see that color over here and there are tons of options. You can of course play with the typography options really well. Now that's really neat. There's one more thing in this. If I want to span the content, span is basically stretching a column. So if I click on this, if I change the column span to two, you can see this cell over two columns. So it stretches over heading one and heading two. And that also means that cell three in this row is pushed to the next column. So that's span. You can also span it across rows. Column is vertical and rows are horizontal, right? So if I pick rows, if it spans across two rows, you can see that two columns and two rows, we just have this cell. So you can add that effect, but the rest all cells get pushed aside because they have to be accommodated somewhere. So that's how it works. You can do the same with the heading as well. So if I span the heading across, I change it to 2 or let's span the heading 3 to 3 so it covers all the cells. So you can basically design any complex table that you can think of just with the visual interface and you can see how it looks like. That's really neat, right? You can simply publish this and since this is an Elementor interface, you won't be having any problem putting this anywhere. Now, the question is, how do you put it in the Gutenberg interface? There are two ways to do this. If you have the free version of Elementor, you can click on the section, right click on the section, and you can simply save it as a template. I'll call it solid table. 
or let's call it UAE table. So once you save this as a template, it will be available within your template library. Now let's go to our Gutenberg interface. You can hit command E that will open up finder and you can hold down command and click on dashboard that will take you to the dashboard. Now let's actually compose a new post in Gutenberg. I'll click on add new. I'll call it table post. Now if you have the free version, you can install Elementor blocks for Gutenberg which is another free plugin. So that will give you Elementor blocks and you can simply pick, pick your template, save template from Elementor. But since I have Elementor Pro, I get access to the shortcode. I can simply copy this and I can use the shortcode block and I can simply paste my shortcode just like that. So if I publish, if I view the post, that particular template is then embedded into Gutenberg interface. Just like that. Since I rolled this template, the ultimate tables template to its normal version. Now when I refresh this page, it will be restored to its normal version, right? That's really neat. And there's one more way to do this. If you just want the widget itself, so that you can change it from anywhere across Elementor interface, you can right click and save as a global widget. This global widget is a part of Elementor Pro. Again, if you have free version, just go with Elementor Blocks plugin, install it and it will give you blocks, just do it. I'll call it table one. Even this way you get a short code to work with. I'll update this. Now, if I go back to my save templates and refresh it, there's our global widget. You can also embed this in your post. So if I click on edit post, instead of this, I can simply embed the shortcode of the widget itself. It won't have the section background and stuff, but still the widget itself is present, right? Just like that. And it's working perfectly fine. So yeah, we're able to sort it out. We can we can search for a cell, we can filter it out by the entries, number of entries and stuff. So that's how you make visual tables in Elementor interface with drag and drop interface, right? Using ultimate add-ons for Elementor. And that's it. It's quite simple. And if it's a global widget, you can basically edit it from any Elementor page and the changes are reflected wherever this widget is used. That's really neat. But if you have the free version, again, you can either do this or you can paste this section into anywhere Elementor free version template and then you get a shortcode for that. Even that's a way to work with free templates. So this is how you create visual tables, all visual, right? Everything what you see is what you get. And you just paste it into Gutenberg interface or if you want, you can reuse it as a template in Elementor interface. That's how you create visual tables. It's really neat, really powerful. What do you think? If you don't have ultimate add-ons for Elementor, I highly recommend you get it. Links to everything, Elementor Pro, ultimate add-ons and everything will be in the description down below. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Catch you in the next one. Peace.